a mother beggar for refusing to take care of my friend's children every time she asks so she can go out. Me and my friend are not from the same country. We do not live in either of our countries. We live in a completely different continent and we do not have kids. When we moved to this country, my husband had a friend, they are married and they have two kids. I just want to add here that I really love babies. So when I met them, the girl was two months old and I obviously adore her and I still do. My husband, friend and wife share the same musical taste. Last year, she, my friend, got tickets to a concert. I offered to take care of her kids so she, hers and my husband could enjoy the concert together. I went to their place after work and it was fine, putting aside the fact that I was exhausted and the kids went to bed almost at midnight. Fast forward to today, I have been asked a few times if I can take care of the kids so they all three can go to concerts. I have said no to all of them. I do not know why, but this upset me a lot. Not in a way that I get angry, but it does affect my mood. I'm a very straightforward person and luckily, I know how to say no. At the least of last year, the husband asked me and I said no because of work and I'll be tired. He started asking me what time I was working. I answered him, which he said it was not too early and that I will still rest. I shut him down as I don't have to explain myself. Unfortunately, because of this, my friend, his wife, did not go to the concert. This year, my friend asked me again if I could take care of the kids. She said something along the lines, two things, would you like to go to a concert or would you able to stay with the kids? This rubs me the wrong way for some reason. I said I have plans already and to ask my husband if he wanted to do it. Her husband was working that day, by the way, and my husband ended up looking after the kids. So today I have been asked again. There is a concert that my husband and the two of them are going. She knows I'm working a long shift, 7 a.m. till 8.30 p.m. She asked if I will consider going to their house after work and being there till midnight when they come back that they are definitely paying. It has never been about the money. She added that she knows I'm honest and that I should not feel obligated to do it. I have been vocal with my husband about how it bothers me to be asked to look after the kids every time they went to a concert. My husband does not get why I get upset and that I should simply say no and that's it. But I do feel that it's taking its all on the friendship. I know they ask me because they trust me and their kids like me. My friend is wonderful. She is nice and has been there for me always. She is overall a very sweet and caring person. But I do not like the situation that I have been put on. One thing is to offer and other things if to be asked every time they want to go out to this concert. So guys, I'm at the bad guy here. I'm a the bad guy for wearing a kimono to prom. I'm a junior in high school. My parents are divorced and my stepmom is Japanese. We get along really well and I think my mom is jealous of her sometimes. Prom was last weekend and I was at my dad's for the weekend so he was taking me. Originally, I was going to wear a red dress that I bought with my own money. My stepmom pulled me aside before I was surprised to get ready and show me her kimono she owned. She said if I want, I could wear this if I want. It was gorgeous. And I said yes. We had a good time getting me ready. And I brought the other dress to wear during the main party. Other official pictures were taken in the kimono. I had great times. My mom got all pictures today and was not happy. She asked why the hell I will wear that and it wasn't appropriate. We got in an argument and I got grounded. I know she loud into my dad for it. Ask my friend, she has Japanese heritage, about what she thought of the dress and she wasn't happy with new wearing it either. So my mom and friend were unhappy. So my school has a large Asian population. Just found out most people think I did this for attention since they don't know about my stepmom. 
Probably should have thought about that beforehand so that gossip is gonna suck for a bit. Damage control it is. On a sad note, I know how my mom was so upset. Basically, she has been getting calls about it basically asking what the hell, which makes her explain, which brings up the divorce and that stepmom is much younger. So overall, bad day for her. So what do you think? I'm at the bad guy for telling my sister I'm not going to let her disrupt me in the bath again. So, I have a sister who, to put it simply, is horrible. She's never nice to me. She always managed to get her away with things. She believes she's entitled to everything and she'll have everyone do as she asks. So, I was going to get a bath, shower. Our actual shower is broken, so we have to have a bath and use the shower head to wash our hair. Ask her, before I even started running the bath at around 11.50, if she needed the toilet, she said no. So, I went ahead, started running the bath at a slow speed so I could get my stuff ready, as I was planning to do college work and stuff after. I was spending time getting that stuff out. When I actually got in my bath, shower, it was around 12 o'clock. Now, to make it clear, the most amount of time I have ever spent in the bath in 20 minutes because I sometimes just like to relax. I had been in there 10 minutes and I was just about to finish washing my hair off when she started knocking on the door and telling me to get out because she needs to go to the toilet. I told her no, I'm not finished yet. There is an outside toilet you can use and ask you before I had if you needed to go. She made it fuse essentially crying out about it, before I had to get out and stand on the landing with a towel wrapped around me. This was super uncomfortable for me, as it made me span even longer basically naked, which is already hard enough for me due to dysphoria. She spent a few minutes in there before finally getting out. I went back in, immediately finished with my hair and go out. It took me barely any time, two minutes max. I got dressed, went downstairs and told her that the next time I'm not going to be responsible for her weak bladder and that she can either go when I ask her, if she needs to, go outside or wait a few minutes for me to finish. She of course starts to kick off crying and calming it's not her fault. I take hours in the bath and that she doesn't like the outside toilet. She doesn't like spiders and apparently there is lots in there. I have literal arachnophobia and I go out there. There is never usually any spiders. I hate people crying. And my mom told me off for being rude and now I'm starting to feel bad for it. So I'm at the bad guy here. I'm at the bad guy for having pregnancy cravings during my husband's surgery. I'm a six month pregnant and I have really strong cravings from mango-flavored toothpaste. I know it sounds weird, but ever since I got pregnant, I spent hours just squirting toothpaste into my mouth. It's like a burst of tropical paradise. I checked with the doctor and it's not harmful to me or the baby. So I don't think that's a problem. The problem is that the only place I can get mango-flavored toothpaste is at the convenience store two hours away from our house. My living husband has stepped up to get it for me regularly. Now my husband is a brilliant brain surgeon and take his job very seriously. He is always focused and committed to his patients, which is sometimes I always admire about him. However, the other day, in the middle of him performing a delicate brain surgery, I called him and asked that he leave the operating room to go buy me mango-flavored toothpaste. I knew it was an odd request and perhaps inconvenient for him, but my craving was so strong that I couldn't think of anything else. I pleaded with him, telling him that if he truly loved me, he will understand how important it was for me to have that toothpaste. I could hear the frustration and disbelief in his voice and he tried to reason with me, reminding me of the critical nature of his work and the potential risk of living in the middle of surgery. 
Despite his objections, I insisted that he prioritize my cravings and fulfill my requests. I even threatened to make a scene at the hospital if he didn't comply. Eventually, my husband agreed, knowing how stubborn I can be and not wanting to further escalate the situation. He left the operating room, leaving his colleagues to cover for him, and refused to the nearest store to find the elusive mango-flavored toothpaste. I could sense his irritation, but I convinced myself that it was justified because pregnancy cravings can be overwhelming after what felt like an eternity. He returned with a toothpaste, visibly frustrated and anxious to get back to his patient. Once I got the mango-flavored toothpaste in my hand, I felt a odd mix of satisfaction and guilt. On one hand, I was delighted that I could finally indulge in my craving. On the other hand, I couldn't shake off the feeling that I had pushed my husband so far. I knew he had responsibility to his patient. And I couldn't help but wonder if my demand had compromised the quality of care he was providing. When my husband finally left to surgery, I saw the exhaustion and distraction in his eyes. He later said, be try to focus. But his mind was clouded by the events that had just unfolded. The guilt weighed heavily on me, and I began to question whether my cravings was worth jeopardizing the well-being of someone else. Also, his friends and co-workers are blowing up my phone, saying I was selfish. Am I? I'm at the back gate for teaching my sister how to pull in Ritzaro, and they clapping back at my mom when she was pulling us over it. I've been in Sotaro for about five years. I used to run a channel about it, but school got in the way. My sister just started to dip her toes into finding her own personality outside of the one assigned to her by mom and dad. I love my parents, but they had kids expecting mini-me. Oh, we don't act so lot Sam. I don't want to read epic fantasy novels. They're not bad, just disappointed. They have always been bad about my interest in astrology in tarot because it doesn't fit with their role in the house atheism and GTFO thing. It's all very ahead when people shove their beliefs down my throat, but it's okay when I do it, caught it. Anyway, my sister has taken up an interest in tarot and wanted me to teach her the basics. So for her birthday, I bought her first deck, a standard one. I sat with her and we went through some card meanings. How to read the cards as a story, how to read them in the different layout positions, etc. To be honest, she's kind of a natural. She's always been a really good storyteller, so I'm not surprised. I'm kinda jealous. Mom found out and flipped out on me trying to infiltrate her growing mind and fill her head with make-believe garbage and all that. It's not like I'm initiating her into a secret cult. It's not like we're taking any of this gospel truth. It's fun. It's introspective. It's storytelling, etc. People like my parents have this idea that we all think if we pull a certain card that we think it is undeniable truth when it's not that deep. We were in my room looking at new decks because my sister already wants to branch out and my mom came in and started the whole you don't really believe in all this crap, do you? thing in a really condescending, mean girl way. And when she heard me say something like, oh, so this card might mean that, she was like, you know that X isn't actually real, right? Like, you get that, right? And I finally snapped and was like, are you really trying to troll your child because she likes something you don't? And then I said in a mocking tone, you know that she isn't your mini-me, right? Like, you get that, right? She argued back that she was trying to make sure that she didn't spend her time on all this make-believe stuff. And I just like, okay, because it really seems like you're trying to bully your own kids. And it's given 90s mean girl. The look on her face changed real fast and she backed out and said okay and left the room. But not before saying some corny, 
I guess I raised a bunch of airheads. Am I the beggar for this whole thing? Like I'm just trying to bond with my sister and help her explore something that has brought me a lot of enjoyment and I've made friends doing. But logic and reason Bo aka mom is super bent over it. I'm the bad guy for ruining my ex's new relationship. Me and my ex dated for two years, but we just broke up last year because of long distance. After three months, he's dating Angie's. False name. I know that girl. She's the girl who often comments, Oh my god, you guys are the cutest couple on TikTok. But I don't really care. But my friends often send me screenshots that Angie's often imitates my style on Instagram, even with the exact same caption and the same clothes. And the climax was last week. I just discovered that one of the fake accounts following my account was Angie's. So how do I know? When we try to log in and select a forgot password, Instagram will give you the option to send a code to the phone number or Gmail in the phone number option. The last two ends of the number are not censored. And I did that for all the Instagram accounts she has. And the numbers are all the same. Bingo. And what's crazier is that she follows all my friends from following lists. I check them one by one because I only follow like 100 people in my Instagram. She follows my childhood friends, my high school friends, even my family. Of course, I feel very uncomfortable. I know this is wrong, but I was so mad and irritating, so I post an Insta story of me when I was still dating my ex. I also know that Angie's got the exact same gift that my ex gave me thanks to my friend who's telling me about this. So I posted on the story a photo of the gift and yes, this week my friends told me that they had broken up. However, one of my friends telling me that it's wrong and I shouldn't have just ruined their relationship. But I was annoyed because Angie seems overly obsessed with me. Even though me and my ex haven't kept in touch in so long and we blocked each other. So I'm not the bad guy here. I'm not the bad guy for selling rather than giving away stuff from my late mother's house. So my single mother died. And as the only child, I'm being forced to go through the estate with the help of the family friend lawyer and the real estate agent, whom are both honest people. Long story short, she made a ton of bad financial choices and I will inherit no money or assets after all is said and done. I'm not working through to get rid of the furniture and stuff around the house before I go to sell it. A few weeks ago, I told my girlfriend mother that she could have it all for free since I never liked my mother and none of its stuff I want to keep. Upon further investigation, I realized that it's all designed hide and furniture that costs thousands and the sheet is filling with even more worth of tools and etc. After realizing it's worth far more than the junk my mother had around the house, I went back and said that I would like to strike up a deal to sell everything she wanted to her for a bargain price. For example, a new dresser that was 2000k for 200 bucks. This really upset her as she felt it was going back in my word. In total, I'll be asking for around 4k for the entire house. I estimate that used on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, I could get closer to 10k, but I don't want the hustle of listing and moving tons of stuff. Yes, I'm going back in my word, but given the change in circumstances and my graduation from college this year, I need some money and my girlfriend mother could easily buy all this brand new no problem. My girlfriend says just to give it away since I still don't want it and I'm being greedy for asking her mother for money after saying it was free and after all her mother has done for me. It's true, her mother is more of a mother than I ever had but I don't know if it's such a terrible thing to ask for very reasonable price so I can make a little money, while also provide my girlfriend mom with high quality stuff that's almost brand new. So, write in the comments below what do you think?